about the suitable for puzzles? Um, so... I'll, I'll hold it up. It's okay, part of yeah. my, my job as presenter yeah. to, to present it. Um, so, if you're a member, shirts are only $15, but if you're a non-member, they're $20. So, if you want to go on the pub crawl, <laughs> join the club. <laughs> um, so, I guess that brings me to the matter of the talk. So, yeah, um, Thomas Tu will be presenting a talk on the importance of stupidity in science. So, science is hard. I've said that already. Yeah, and uh, you're and stealing you my lines. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'm sorry! <laughs> Um, and sometimes you have to learn to deal with things being hard and difficult and feeling stupid. So I don't want to steal any more of Thomas's talk. Thank, so I'll thanks, Aaron. Turn it over. Okay. Thanks, Aaron. Um, so I'm going to talk about the stupidity, uh, importance of stupidity in science. And I just wanted to start off saying that uh, these are based on my experiences as a PhD student. Um, I'm a third year. PhD student hoping to write up by the start of next year. Um, and I mean, your, your PhDs might not be exactly the same, but um, these experiences, I think, are, are common enough to um, deserve a talk um, as just a, a bit of warning about what science is actually like. Um, and, and just to give a shout out, uh, the M... Uh, the School of Molecular and Biomedical Science uh, sponsors this talk uh, and gets you free pizza and free soft drink today. So uh, I've got three main points. One is science is hard. Uh, second, thank you, Aaron. Uh, science makes you feel stupid. And three is only a few people can be only scientists. So the first one. Science is hard. Uh, you'll probably know this. This is just a little bit of, of, of science and you're expected to memorize this or uh, bits of this. And that, that's hard. That's what you think about when, when you think science is hard. So eventually, go through your undergrad, you remember this, you become, oh, uh, and, and you do science and this is what you might think science is. You uh, think up a hypothesis, you accept that challenge, you read science and do science, and that's the hard bits. And then after you do it hard enough, you get a Nobel Prize, and, and that's science. <laughs> um, so basically, you become this guy in front of lots of maths or, or lots of research, and then you get results like this. So uh, this is a graph of um, the background radiation of the universe. So the, the line represents um, something that someone hypothesized. The frequency of uh, light in the background, um, background radiation of the universe would be like this. And the squares are the observations from the COBE telescope. So they match right on, uh, that's what science is, obviously. Um, and, and this sort of thinking uh, I had during my honours viva. Uh, in fact, Lindsay Dent asked me during this, this interview, wh wh where do you find yourself, where do you think you'll find yourself in, in five years? What do you want to do in five years? And obviously I said, uh, cure liver cancer, and obviously now I have a Nobel Prize in uh, curing liver cancer. Um, <laughs> not, not really. Uh, because come PhD time, this is exactly how my ambition went. So at the start I'm thinking, oh yeah, I'll, I'll win a Nobel Prize. Oh, that's not going to work out. Maybe I'll just, you know, revolutionize my field. And then now I'm, I'm coming here and getting free pizza. <laughs> um, so, I mean, right now, I feel stupid, <laughs> uh, having shared that story with you. Uh, I don't know why I did that. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, science is much more difficult and much more complicated than you might think uh, at an undergrad level. So basically, the start is the same. 
But once you get down to it, you think something's not going quite as expected. Maybe you've got amazing results and they turn out to be bullshit or you'll think about them for a long while and turns out, you know, someone figured this out 50 years ago. <laughs> or maybe, hopefully, you can publish something. But a lot of it centers and hubs around this sort of reaction. Um, there's lots of PhD students are nodding their head at the moment. Um, yeah. So why does this happen? Why do we feel this way? Why do we feel stupid? Um, it's a, not a big area of research, but uh, there was an essay that was published in the Journal of Cell Science uh, called The Importance of Stupidity in uh, Scientific Research. Um, in this, uh, Martin Schwartz, uh, he talked about um, someone he did uh, honours with and uh, he thought she was really, really smart, um, ends up she dropped out of science and, and became a lawyer instead. And uh, he asked, why, why did you quit science? And she said, it made me feel stupid, so I quit. Um, and, I mean, she wasn't dumb, but it, it's just that change of attitude that, that you really need to know about, um, I think. And so, uh, Martin Schwartz talks about why uh, undergrads might feel stupid, uh, and, and this comes as such a big surprise. So, he, he talked about, just think about all human knowledge being a sort of sphere and the unknown is outside of that sphere, yeah? And so, during your, during your educational life, high school, undergrad, to some extent, honours, you're being led up to the edge of this uh, big ball of, of human knowledge. And during that time, you, you have this sort of value system, okay? So if you have a good answer, you get a pat on, but pat on the back, you get an A, you get praise, that's, that's great. And if you have a bad answer, you drop back a year or fail or whatever. Yeah, there, there is that value system uh, ingrained in, in education. So anyway, you graduate and then you do postgrad stuff. Um, and when you do your lit review, you're trying to push towards the edge of what is known and what is unknown. Yeah. So after that, after you've got your lit review, you come up with a hypothesis. Now it's time to try to reach that hypothesis. You might build a ladder, doesn't work. You might build a pyramid, that doesn't work. You know, you're trying to get to this hypothesis, and and <coughs> things aren't aren't sort of going to plan. Um, you might build a rocket, which leads you to things, which leads you to other 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 things, then it explodes and, and <laughs> you, you've spent your time trying to optimize something that, that didn't work in the first place. The thing is, if you're using this value system, you, this will make you really feel stupid. I mean, um, you're, you're not getting the good answer. The thing is, these questions that you're asking yourself, what's going wrong, am I getting the right answers, am I even asking the right questions? You might ask yourself that, those, and fair enough, you, you'd ask it during your educational uh, system, your uh, educational rise, and a supervisor or, or a lecturer might know. The thing is, if you're doing research, no one knows, okay? So, you're, it's somewhat liberating in that there's no one telling you, not nah, that's completely wrong, stop doing that. Um, but you also have to get that change in mentality to, to, to go on, basically. And the thing is, as you're attempting these things, that's adding to the, the human knowledge. 
even if it's like this doesn't work still it's something new that no one has done before so basically what I want to say is the majority of research is not like this like planning a hypothesis getting it straight away with perfect accuracy it's more like this so uh, hopefully you're all familiar with antibiotics and, and the way it was um, um, discovered by someone leaving a petri dish out and, and a spore of something getting in so it, it's tracing up those things that aren't going to answer your original hypothesis but are interesting nonetheless that, that's my, uh, what science is I mean you're, you're trying to go places where no one else has been before and it's really hard to um, account for everything when a lot of stuff is unknown still so Isaac Asimov a famous science uh, fiction writer uh, summed it up with, with this the most exciting phrase to hear in science the one that heralds new discoveries is not Eureka but rather hmm that's funny um, so that's one point and a, and a sort of related point is this thing called the Kruger uh, the Dunning-Kruger um, uh, what's it called phenomenon um, so basically they found that people who are uh, not as educated they will think of themselves as, as really good they don't see their own um, errors uh, in fact they say here not only do these people reach erroneous conclusions and make unfortunate choices but their incompetence robs them of the metacognitive ability to realize it so the metacognitive ability is basically knowledge about your knowledge um, so basically this is a graph of that um, perceived logical reasoning they tested their logical reasoning and people in the bottom quartile second quartile third quartile and top quartile and these lines represent what they thought they got as a percentage of their classmates so people who are in the bottom quartile will think they're pretty good pretty top shit um, but people in the top quartile will underestimate their abilities so actually the, the more you are educated the more stupid you feel uh, which is really uh, interesting this, this paper won the Ig Nobel Prize by the way um, so that, that's pretty cool um, so basically I wanted to say if science makes you feel stupid only if you're doing it right um, so that, that phenomenon along with other things um, means that only few people can be only scientists it's a really demanding job it, it's mentally taxing um, and, and I'm not even like a proper scientist yet um, <laughs> I'm just a PhD student um, so there, there were a couple of, paper, uh, a couple of articles in Nature this year uh, talking about uh, the culture of science and, and how um, you can't be just a scientist I mean, uh, so this article talks about how the people in this guy's lab the 24-7 lab uh, they work in it 24 hours a day and they're here over Christmas and New Year writing grant applications and this supervisor really pushes them uh, to their limits um, the thing is it comes at the price uh, the, the supervisor actually admitted that the area in which I've failed the most is as a father this other article was in response to this one um, and it, it brings to mind the, the, the more balanced approach so even, even this um, scientist thinks that to be a su successful scientist there are times when it is important to pull out all stops uh, and, and she likes to or likes to imagine 
locking everyone in the lab to push for these results more quickly. But the th thing is, uh, she, she says that uh, she's found that spending long hours in the lab doesn't necessarily promote the creative thinking that is integral uh, to scientific discovery. In fact, I have many of my best ideas while walking the dogs in the morning. There's a dog. Um, <laughs> Uh, riding my bike home from work or weekending in the mountains. And that, that's, uh, I, I think that's a, a good approach. Um, but um, I guess it depends on your character and the character of your supervisor. So I think it is important for you to, if you're interested in, in getting into research, to really find out what your supervisor is, is going to be like. Um, that's that's quite important, as as well as the actual research output that that the, the lab puts out. And I, I think that this all leads to a more important point: that life is finite. You only have about 81 years of of life on average, uh, according to the CIA or a book, fact book. And I think it's important to live them. Um, so what do I do? As well as science stuff, I, I uh, step on people's faces for fun. Uh, <laughs> um, I write a blog uh, called Disease of the Week, which you should check out. Um, I, I give talks. Uh, I write for the newspaper sometimes. Um, so it's not about not doing science, it's about threading it through your life and, and looking at other aspects of it. Uh, uh, this is Miles, who's right there, he's in a band. Um, I take photos of him and other things. Uh, <laughs> and, and we're actually collaborating on, on song stuff. Um, and I, I think um, that family, friends, those are quite important as well and will help you get through research, as well as things like the Adelaide University Molecular and Biomedical Science Club. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, uh, just a little plug there. So uh, we're actually looking for uh, undergrads to go on our committee. Um, so people like the Rhodes Scholars uh, look kindly upon having a balanced life like this. So there's, there's academic advantages as well. Uh, to, to join our club. So this is our committee. Uh, Aaron El Presidente. <laughs> Ali, the one with the nice drugs, is Bronwyn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad she's not here. <laughs> James Byrne, uh, Melissa Chan, peeing in a, a urinal for some reason. <laughs> the arm, uh, Sean, me, uh, and Fran. Uh, so come join. So I just wanted to end this talk um, with a quote from my favourite scientist, uh, Richard P. Feynman. Uh, he was talking about uh, a glass of wine and how there's, there's all this science going around with the physics of um, fluid dynamics of the evaporation, there's geology of the, the glass being made out of uh, silicon, um, of, of biology, of, of the fermentation that's happening, the chemistry, uh, the psychology of drinking and it imprinting um, an experience on our, on our minds. Then he ended up saying, if in our small minds, for some convenience, divide this glass of wine, this universe, into parts, physics, biology, geology, astronomy, psychology, and so on, remember that nature does not know it. So let us put it back together, not forgetting ultimately what it is for. Let us give one more final pleasure. Drink it and forget it all. Thank you. Um, are there any questions or...? I'm <laughs> taking your lines. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Are there any questions? <laughs> or discussions? Um, things you thought were wrong. That, that, that's also fine.
Oh, how have you joined the club? <laughs> you can um, sign up today if you like. It costs $5 for the rest of this year and all of next year. So, um, yeah, yeah, I guess if there's something else, let's have pizza! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> That's an awesome program.